Hey everyone, Anthony Sequera here with Stormwind Live, <clears throat> and this is a recording that I wanted to introduce to the class today regarding certification, testing, and also for those of you that aren't interested in certification testing, I wanted to go ahead and discuss with you how you can be ready for production work with your routers and your switches that we are covering in our ICND1 event here. So we wanna do two things. We wanna talk a bit about the certification exam that most of you are preparing for, and we also want to ensure that you get a lot of good hands-on practice when it comes to your ICND1 material. Understand, for those of you that are interested, oh, and by the way, we're gonna do this for a bit and then get to our regularly scheduled programming with our new content that we must cover for today from the ICND1 course. So for those of you that are interested in certification, understand that the ICND1 exam for the CCENT certification that goes with this course Understand that it's going to consist of a variety of question types. It's going to consist of single answer, multiple choice, where you're going to read a question, you're going to examine the multiple choice options, and you're going to select the best answer. It's going to consist of multiple choice that have multiple correct answers. So you'll read the question, you'll read over the answers, and it'll tell you choose the two correct, or choose the three correct, or choose the four correct responses. And then you're going to have questions that are based on exhibits. So they'll look, you'll look at pictures, and then you'll make multiple choice selections. So there's a variety of multiple choice that you have to deal with. There'll also be some drag and drop questions. So there'll be just these blocks over on the left hand side and you have to drag these blocks into the appropriate location over on the right hand side, for instance. But the question type that students tend to fear, the question type that they, they get nervous about, and they shouldn't, but they do, are the simulations in this exam environment where Cisco is gonna show you a topology of some routers and some switches, and they're going to ask you to make a particular configuration on these devices. Yeah, these are definitely the question types that students tend to be nervous about because multiple choice, we tend to be very well rehearsed with those and, and we're used to having multiple choice questions in exams probably since our early academic days. So when it comes to this exam, the really interesting question type is that unique simulation based question. Now great news, you're practicing in this class, you're working in this class because you want to know how to manage and configure and troubleshoot these Cisco routers and switches that we've been working with. So it's great that the certification exam does these real world style simulation questions because it's going to lead right into the work that you're doing to master these devices. The other great news, of course, is that we here at Stormwind Live have provided you with actual Cisco equipment to practice on. Let's go ahead and take a look at that equipment right now, and I wanted to take some time and give you some tips for the equipment usage that I really think you're going to like. So here I am up at the Stormwind Live uh, website, and I scroll over to the left, and I choose the Campus Logon. And then, of course, we go down to our login information here. I am Anthony at Stormwind. Thank goodness they didn't have me use my last name because I still can't spell my last name. And I input my password. No, I'm not telling you what my password is today. Sorry. And uh, this is saying, do you want to view only the web content that was delivered securely? You can actually turn this annoying message off from Internet Explorer. And I'm going to say, no, I want to see all of the content. And when we get in the campus here, of course, we go up to our professional development menu, choose development paths, and we are doing Epic Live Cisco. And then we're going to find our ICND one page. 
Boy, you can see that I've subscribed to a lot of classes in here. Imagine that. Aren't you glad you're not me? So here we go. Interconnecting Cisco Network Devices Part 1. I'm going to go ahead and choose this link. And I'm going to say, oh, no, I want to get all of the content that you have to show me. So here we are on the course page. Notice uh, we have the recorded sessions and the password for the recorded sessions. That's great stuff. We scroll down. Here's our exam prep. Now, what's interesting about this exam prep is it's, it's awesome. Uh, I helped create it, but keep in mind that this particular exam prep is multiple choice only. Yeah, we don't have a simulation engine of our own like Cisco does for their certification exam. So this is great, great prep to find out what your weaknesses are, but it is indeed eliminated to the single answer, multiple choice that I described, the multiple answer, multiple choice that I described. So that is a limitation of this particular exam prep. Notice there is the Ask a Mentor. Notice there's the Request for Your Student Guide link. But what I wanted to spend some time with in this particular segment is I wanted to look at these hands-on labs. Aren't these going to be a critical component? If you're not interested in certification, that's fine. You need to be utilizing these labs so that you can practice with Cisco equipment to master this content that we're covering. If you are interested in certification, you absolutely need to be in these hands-on labs because the simulations in your exam environment are going to cover this content. I mean, you're going to be responsible for configuring what appear to be actual Cisco and routers and switches in your exam environment. Keep in mind that while it's a simulation that you're working with in the exam, it is indeed going to act look, smell, just like a real Cisco router or switch. It's, it's pretty much impossible, especially at the entry level, for you to be able to tell the difference between a real router or a switch and the simulation in the exam environment. So, you know, you can come in here and you look at this and you say, all right, I'm ready to go ahead and practice enhancing the security of initial router configuration. So I'm going to click on this particular virtual lab. We scroll down here and we can read a little bit about the skills that we are going to experience with this particular lab. Notice this particular lab, it's estimated, will take you about 60 minutes. What's really interesting about this, of course, is that you can take absolutely as little or as much time as you like. Yeah, if you want to just go in quickly and practice one or two things that we did in the course together, you have that ability, okay? And you can do that anytime you like. So we are not locked down to this 60-minute time period. It's just that if we were going to do absolutely everything that this particular lab were to portray, then we would indeed be stuck here for about 60 minutes. Okay. It's time for us to go to our lab content. So I go ahead and select this lab content tab right here. And now we scroll down. We can read more about the skills that we are going to gain and skills that are required. <laughs> I probably wouldn't read that myself. And now we go over to the right here and we choose the Access VLAB button that's over here on the right. Now what's going to happen is the lab is going to pop up in this separate window. And let's see, the page you're using Java. OK, great. Yes, we want to use Java. All right, wonderful. Up in the top left now, you'll want to go ahead and select the Start Lab Now button. So we'll go ahead and choose the Start Lab Now button, and that will start your lab loading. This is really pretty remarkable, isn't it? What's happening in the background right now is up at VLabs, they're taking real Cisco routers and switches, they are wiping their configurations clean, and they are getting them set up for you to come in here and practice with this actual equipment. Now, while your lab is loading, oh, and wait, we've got a question from Bill in the audience. Let me go ahead and take Bill's question. Bill says, can you access one lab several times? 
Bill, what an awesome question. Thank you. And keep the questions coming, everybody. Yeah, absolutely. You can schedule, uh, you, can, you can come in and do the same lab 50 times, 100 times. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Absolutely. So just absolutely take advantage of this remarkable capability that you have purchased here at Stormwind Live. Okay, so notice it's telling us the lab is going to start in a certain duration. While the lab is going through this loading process, what you can do is you can check out uh, a summary of what the lab is going to do for you. You can take a look at the lab scenario. And by the way, as you click on these particular buttons, let me move this so you can see it. This information is being presented down to you at the bottom of the screen. So um, sorry you can't see everything because of my re relatively small demonstration window, but just trust me. As you're clicking on these items over here on the left, you're seeing the content below this pane that's loading. Now look at this. I love this, right? They warned us that this particular lab would take approximately seven minutes to load, and they lied to us. It took only about... What was that, two minutes? Isn't that awesome? So it really loaded quickly, this particular lab. It didn't take even the full time that they warned us about. Now, there is something interesting, Bill, and everybody else to watch out for. There is a time remaining, okay? And this is accurate. So while you can do this particular hands-on lab as many times as you would like, watch out, it will, you know, it does time you out. And, and that's obviously fair, right? They're not going to allow you to come in and just sit on their equipment for like five hours doing nothing because that wouldn't be fair to your fellow students. So while we can do this lab as many times as, as we could possibly want to, keep in mind that this time remaining is going to spit you out at the end of that particular time. Okay, so over on the right-hand side now, we can see something really exciting. <laughs> At least for geeks like me, it's really exciting. We can see there's this topology map. And notice the items in blue you can actually click on. The items in blue you can actually click on. The items in green are devices that are in your lab. It's just that they are not accessible for you to manipulate in any way, shape, or form. So pretty, pretty awesome to say the least. Now, if I want to access R1, notice up here for connectivity, the default is for you to be in this little ActiveX-based Telnet window that appears here in Internet Explorer. So I just clicked on that particular device. And what happens is, as you can see, is now we can connect to that R1 device in this little ActiveX window. And uh, look, I, we got to accept this. Um, we got to install what Internet Explorer is blocking. All right. And now we've got to uh, run this particular add-on. So I've got to install some add-ons here to get this particular lab to work. And then I can go ahead and connect to my R1 device. And I'm already getting annoyed. Yeah, I'm already getting annoyed with this. I'm going to go ahead and close this. And I'm going to come back to the topology map. And I'm going to show you something that is really cool. In an actual production network, you wouldn't access your R1 device using some silly little ActiveX-based control like this. You would go ahead and access your Cisco device using a terminal application, right? Like we've talked about in this particular class. You're going to be using something like Hyperterminal or Secure CRT, or you're going to be using the freeware TerraTerm application. So let me go ahead and bring in the freeware TerraTerm application and let's see how we're going to use that just like we're in a real live production network to access our equipment. Here's how you do it. 
I'm going to come back into my hands-on lab here and I'm going to drop this connection type option and I'm going to choose Telnet Native Application. Okay? And now what it says is, it says, okay, we've got this big long username for you, this big long password, and that's how you can get into these devices using whatever native Telnet application you want. And here is the IP address and port that you're going to go to. Wow, this is awesome. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to carefully highlight the IP address. Notice you got to do it real carefully because you do not want to highlight the colon and the port number for Telnet of 23. So we just very carefully highlight the IP address there. And I'm going to right click and choose copy. We're now going to bring up our terminal application program. I'm going to say file, new connection, and I'm going to paste in that IP address that we carefully copied. I'm going to say OK, and it's going to bring us to the VLabs interface, and it's waiting for our username. OK, great. I'm going to go back over here to username, and I'm going to carefully copy this big long username. Now you really do have to be careful when you're copying this. Notice I just copied an extra space. So be careful, you're going to have to highlight very carefully so as not to copy an extra space. Once you've got it properly highlighted, you can right click, choose copy, bring up your application, do an edit, paste, and then hit enter on the keyboard, and now you're ready for the password. So I'm going to come over here, highlight the password, be careful that you don't copy an extra space, come over to the Telnet application, do an edit, paste, hit enter on your keyboard, and look at this, we are at an interface that allows us to get on one of these real Cisco pieces of equipment. Look at this, I can get on a 3560 switch. How cool. All I've got to do is press number one on the keyboard, hit enter, and look at this. We are on a bona fide Cisco 3560. I'll do my show version command to make sure that is indeed the case. Here you can see we're on a 3560. It's been up for about 10 minutes. I'll hit Q to cancel this output. I'll go configure terminal. Enable secret, and I'll start practicing whatever that I want to practice from the course. You know, set an enable secret password, go into the VTY ports. I will go ahead and do the password command there. I'll indicate that this password should be checked at login. Notice we are doing anything we want to. And of course, that's one of the beauties of real equipment, isn't it? We can come in here and we can certainly follow the lab instructions and the recommended approach that they have for us in the lab exam here uh, in this particular lab exercise. But obviously, because it's actual equipment, we can come in here and practice whatever it is that we want to practice. Now. You've got this switch one up in this particular window. Okay, you've got this switch one up in this particular window. What you can do, obviously, is you can bring up another device in another terminal window. So I can go and launch my TerraTerm all over again. Okay, so now I just launched another window. I can go in and copy this information out establish a new connection, and I can bring up another device in the native Telnet window. So I'll go in again, and I would input my username and password, and I would make a connection to another device in the pod. So this is going to be an unbelievably powerful way in which for you to practice with these configurations.
Now, great question from the audience. The question is, can I save? You know, I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna do all this great work on the switch, all these wonderful configurations that I've learned how to do. This is my fancy switch for a host name. We're gonna do all these great configurations. And the time is ticking back here, isn't it? Yeah, I've only got 58 minutes left. Well, there is no native save opportunity in the VLAB. I mean, think about it. You're gonna be on this equipment playing for 50 minutes and then you're gonna get spit out and one of your fellow students is gonna go in and they're going to reserve this particular equipment and they're gonna be working with the particular lab. So you can't save anywhere. There's no save utility built into the VLAB. But guess what, I've got great news for you. You can save on your own computer. Yeah, you can save your work on your own computer. Here's a really, really cool way to do that. Watch this. If you do a show run, you know what happens, right? The switch shows you a screen worth of information, and then the switch says this more, and then you have to hit the space bar, and then you get another screen of information, and then we have this more, and then you hit space bar, and you get another screen of information. Okay, well, let me show you a trick. You can go in and you can say terminal monitor. Uh, let's see, I haven't done this in a while. One second, let me refresh my memory. No, we don't want the terminal monitor command. What we want is terminal length. So you say terminal length and you set it to zero. Jot this command down because I did not teach you this command in any of our live sessions. All right, so please jot that down. Terminal length zero. Jot that down somewhere in your notes. Everybody got it? Terminal length zero, good. Now, what did that do? Well, when I do my show run, what happens is, notice it never paused. It just went and gave me all of the running config and didn't do that more prompt. Now, you have the running configuration of the device without any interruption. And now you can copy that running configuration and you can paste it into a notepad file and you just saved your configuration. And notice that it doesn't have any of those annoying little more indications, so you don't even have to edit those to get them to function properly uh, when you paste the configuration into one of your lab routers. Now, there is a little gotcha here in my terminal emulation program of TerraTerm. Yeah, let me show you how to solve that. Notice it did a good job of giving me all of the running config, but when I try and go back and copy it, the config is so long, it stops right here in the middle of the configuration. This isn't the switch's problem. This is silly TerraTerm's problem. We're gonna go up to setup, and if you go into the terminal window, it says, no, nope, wrong place. Let me go into setup and go into window. Yeah, right here, it says scroll buffer, and it's gonna only show me 100 lines at a time. Well, how about we bump that up to 1,000 lines? Okay. Now watch, I'm going to do show run. Thanks to our terminal length zero command, there is going to be no stopping. It's going to show us our entire config. And now thanks to us adjusting the scroll buffer, I can go up and copy this entire configuration to notepad. 
Copy, copy, copy. Happy, happy, happy. All right, right here is the beginning of my running configuration. I'm going to say edit, copy. Now I need to go ahead and bring up everybody's favorite Windows program, Notepad. Free of charge. We love it. All right, so I bring up Notepad. Here, hold on. My Notepad file is huge. Let me resize it. All right, so here we have Notepad. And I'm going to right click, paste, and there is our configuration in Notepad. We can save this configuration on our desktop or wherever we want to save it. And now we can come into the hands-on lab at a later point and we can paste in this configuration to the Switch 1 device. Let me show you how you would do that. I'll go ahead and say Edit, Select All, and then Edit, Copy, and I'll close my notepad file. Here on the switch, we make sure we're in global configuration mode. And when we're in global configuration mode, we can just edit, paste. And you'll see it will type in all those wonderful commands for you that you saved from the notepad file. Look at that. And so you would be right back to where you left off on this particular device. So we want to make sure if you're interested in this class to make sure you possess the real world skills that are required of an entry level type Cisco networking engineer, you got to get in here and you got to practice with these devices. If you're interested in that and certification, because of the certification exam format where you will be configuring routers and switches in that exam, you folks need to be in this particular interface and you need to be practicing with your Cisco routers and your switches. Absolutely. So I wanted to spend some time taking a look at these VLABs taking a look at exactly how you can get the most out of these VLABs. And obviously, some of these are tips and tricks that we don't show anywhere else. So I'm glad we have this opportunity, taking a little bit of time out of our regularly scheduled programming here to cover some really important tips and tricks. Now, let me just talk about a couple of more things with you, and then we'll get back to our regularly scheduled programming. So I'm going to go ahead and close this up now. Um, you should always be polite to your fellow lab students. When you're done and you've got time left, when you're done, please go ahead and choose the Quit Lab button. Yeah, that's being very polite to your fellow students because now you are freeing up this pod of equipment. Please, I beg of you. I mean, there's just absolutely no reason. If you are done and you've got time left on the clock, please quit the lab so you'll free up the equipment for your fellow students, okay? Be a good citizen and, and do that. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is get out of the lab and we're back in our browser and I'm gonna go to uh, Google. And I want to show you a couple, or Bing, that's fine. Uh, we're going to go up to the Cisco Learning Network. As you know, the Cisco Learning Network is one of my favorite places. And so we're going to go to the Cisco Learning Network, and they have a store. There's a store up here at the Cisco Learning Network. If you scroll over to the right, on the links here on top, you'll see they have a store. If you go into the store, you're going to find on the left-hand side that there is a CCENT category in the store. Cool. In the Cisco CCENT store, something that they just came out with, okay, I am so excited about this is a CCENT practice exam. 
Now, what's interesting about this practice exam is that, as you can see here, it's a simulated Pearson View exam experience that features the various question formats, individual skill evaluations, and recommendations for further study. Why am I excited about this particular practice exam that Cisco is now selling? Well, it would include simulations. Yeah, in the exact style that Cisco is going to do them in the exam. Now, this is pretty funny. You can see this particular product has gotten one review at this point, And this one review was not good. Uh, let's check it out. This one review said, a lot of error, or let me get out of the way so you can read it too. A lot of errors and bugs, questions out of the scope of CCENT, no support, it does not worth even a penny. <laughs> well, uh, that's pretty darn harsh. And let's see, did people comment on that? Uh, this has not been resolved. After my review, I have been told that the problem has been resolved and I should receive a refund because there were bugs. All right, anyways, here's what I want to tell you. I have spoken to Cisco about this review. I have spoken to Cisco about this product and they are going to be sending me literally later today or tomorrow, they're going to be sending me this practice exam. So just wait a couple of days and then contact me if you want my direct feedback about this. I am going to be going in here, finding out if anything is truly wrong anymore. I'll be posting a review up here on the product, by the way, and we're, I'm going to help Cisco get this product straightened out so that for those of you that want a, a true like letter-to-letter -letter simulation of your exam, you would have that option. So I'll get this straightened out. Hold off. Don't purchase this product today, obviously. I want you to hold off until my review is done and, and things like that. But pretty interesting that we finally get from Cisco themselves a nice simulation of the exam. Now, I don't know about you, but you may be thinking, you know, wait a minute here. I've got my practice exams in Stormwind Live and they're doing a great job of pointing out my weak areas to me. So I, I really what I'm interested in is I'm interested in the ability to just really preview the style of questions in the exam. I don't need a full blown practice exam like this. So I want to point out another great resource to you. We're going to go up to Cisco.com this time. And uh, in Cisco.com, we're going to scroll over and we're going to go up to training and events and we're going to go to this CCENT category. In the CCENT category, we're going to go and we're going to click on this exam ICND1 that we are interested in that coordinates to this class. And this window comes up. It brings you back to the Cisco Learning Network, of all places. And this window comes up and it says, OK, let's go ahead and uh, tell you about the exam. And here we get to review the type of exam questions. Ah, excellent. So I click on this and it tells you the types of exam questions you might see in this exam and then gives you this view certification exam tutorial. Now I tried this this morning and good. Okay, it's working. Great. Sometimes this is not working right, but it looks like it's working perfectly here. So we scroll down and it says, all right, look, the purpose of this is to teach you the questions in your exam. And it says, okay, Here's how a multiple choice question would work. Uh, yeah, fascinating. Here's how a multiple are correct question would work. Okay, fascinating. And yes, I'm being sarcastic. Obviously, we could figure out these question types. But here's an example of a drag and drop. 
And so they show you what the drag and drops would look like and feel like. Pretty cool. Here's an example of a fill in the blank. And I'll give you a little hint. There are no fill in the blanks in the ICND-1 exam. So I don't know why they're showing us that. Next up, here's what you're really interested in seeing, right? They give you a tutorial on what a simulation is like in the exam. Okay, so this is very, very important. Notice there is a Try Me button right here. We click the Try Me button and it allows you to practice with the particular simulation. Okay, so you can practice with the simulation just so you get a sense for how you're going to access the devices and how that is going to look and feel. Well, folks, I hope you have enjoyed this particular discussion. I hope you've gotten a lot out of this. Remember, hands-on practice with these Cisco devices is something that is imperative for all of you in the audience not just those of you that are interested in real world or not just those of you that are interested in certification. We've got to make sure we get the very best when it comes to our hands-on practice with these actual Cisco devices. A uh, great question from the audience. In this sample, do they have any configuration steps for us to do? Uh, let me see. This is instructions. Ah, uh, yes. Yes, look up here. There are configuration steps that you have to do. It's just something silly like you have to change the host name of lab A to router A. So we come down here and notice here's a computer connected to the lab A router. So we click on that computer and we make a connection to the Lab A router. We hit enter on our keyboard and we're in the Lab A router. We hit enable. We do host name. Oh, uh, let's see. Oh, this is cheesy. Look at this is only a demo of an actual simulation. On the actual simulation, you get to enter your commands. So, no, we don't really get to practice much. But notice why this is so critical. For those of you that are taking the exam, this teaches you all about the simulation interface. Because the last thing you would ever want in the exam environment is to get into the simulation interface and get lost, get stuck on the interface itself. You could fail your whole exam based on just not being familiar, not being ready for that particular exam interface. So you certainly wouldn't want that to happen. All right. Well, we're going to take a 30-second break, and then we need to get to our regularly scheduled programming here. We need to get on to the new content that we are excited to share with you from our ICND-1 course. So we're going to take about a 30-minute break. Uh, excuse me, 30-minute break. That's ridiculous. We don't have that kind of time. We're going to take about a 30-second a, a break, and then we're going to get to our regularly scheduled content for today's ICND-1 session.